Okay, this is going to be a lot of information. Okay, so it's a review of the first two standards that we were learning before we left for spring break. Okay, so this is a lot of information. The third standard on the test that you are going to take on Friday is the standard we just learned. Now remember, your only goal is to pass the standards. We want every single person to get a one. We hope that everybody strives for a two, and we really hope that some of you strive for threes and fours, because these still do go in the grade. Okay, go, these will go into your grade book, which for some of you, it'll take care of some of the incompletes that you had prior to spring break. Okay, so the first page, this is page one of the review on Go Formative. This is not the same problem. Okay, I'm going to do a problem. I'm going to show you how to do the first problem, and then you can jump over to the Go Formative and try that first page. Okay, so if you want, you can watch me do this first problem. You can pause the video and then go to GoFormative.com and try that first problem. Okay, you don't have to. It's just um, an option. Okay. So first problem, there are two dots here that are kind of a little bit harder to see, so I'll mark them in. And all it's asking you to do is calculate the slope. This entire page is just slope. So we've been working a lot with slope with our point slope form. So hopefully counting the slope is not difficult. What we're going to do is we're going to start at one of the dots. I always start at the dot over here on the left, and I'm going to count down and then to the right, okay? If you count down, that's negative. So there are two boxes here, so I went down two, and then over four. Because I went to the right four, it's positive. If you're counting to the left, that would be negative, okay? So my slope here, when you type this in, you don't have to write m equals, you don't have to write anything special. You just write the fraction down to over 4. I do have a note of warning, though. If you leave your fractions without simplifying them, it will take a 0.5 off of your overall total of your score. Okay, so if you're only striving for that level 1, you have to reduce in order to get it. Okay, so this would be negative 1 over two. Okay. Number two. I would suggest that you had some paper next to you while you're taking your test on Friday. I know we don't meet on Fridays, but you do have a test you have to take this Friday. I would suggest that you have some paper next to you for these next three problems. It might be nice to just be able to write them down, or you can use the show your workspace on the actual GoFormative site and write it down there. Okay, so for these uh, two points, we're gonna find the slope, and here's how we did it when we were still back in school. We made a T-chart. You put your X's over here on the left. You put your Y's on the right. So the first X I see is two. The first Y I see is negative three. The first X I see is negative four. The first Y I see is zero. Okay, then what we did is I said, okay, how far is it from negative three to zero? And how far is it from two to negative four? Now, some of you might have your strips of paper with your number lines on them, but if you don't, you can draw a new number line with me here. And you can pause the video at this point if you need time to make a number line. Otherwise, you can just look and use mine. Okay, and again, this is not the problem from Go Formative. This is just how you do the second problem on the first page, first standard.
Okay, so from negative 3 to 0. So start at negative 3 and count until you get to 0. It's 1, 2, 3. I'm at 0, so that's a 3. And again, remember, if you're traveling this way, it's positive. If you're traveling this way, it's negative. Okay, so now I'm going to do the second one, which is to start at 2 and travel till I get to negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I went down, so that's negative 6. Now something that you may have forgotten is you are now supposed to make a fraction. So your answer should look like this. So when you make your fraction, which one of these two numbers goes on top? Okay. And it is always this one that goes on top, the y number, because we rise first and then we run. So that rise is our y number. Okay, so what I have here is 3 over negative 6, which reduces to 1 over 2. And I put the negative out front here. It doesn't matter if the negative is out front or if the negative stays with the 2. That doesn't matter. Let's look at that again. So it's the same process for the level 3 problems. So right here, you're at a level 2. If you can get both of these correct, you're at a level 2. A level 3 pushes you up to that A minus level. So we're going to do the same thing. It's just that the answer comes out a little bit differently here. So from 5 to 5, how far did you go to go from 5 to 5? Well, you didn't go anywhere. So that's a 0. From 3 to negative 2, from 3 down to negative 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I went down, and it's which two of these numbers goes on top. It's this one that goes on top. This number over here is always going to go on top. So that's negative 5 over 0. But in order to get that level 3, you have to know what it's called when you have a 0 on the bottom. A 0 on the bottom is not okay. So if a zero is on the bottom, we call that undefined. Okay. If you happen to have a zero on the top, which is what you would get for this one, that answer is just zero. Okay, so that kind of counts as the reducing part as well. So to get yourself fully to a 3, you have to make sure to write undefined and 0. Okay, Okay. so that gets you to a level 3. If you're interested in a level 4, you can keep listening or you can scooch ahead a little bit to um, the next page. Because the next page is the next standard um, and you need to make sure you look at the level 1 and the level 2 from page 2. Okay, so this is the level 4. Okay, so it says after two months, Tracy has been charged $100. That is your first situation, and it's actually your first point. So after two months, Tracy has been charged $100. Then after five months, she was charged $205. So after five months... She has been charged $205, okay? And now we're right back to what we were doing just a second ago, making a chart. And figuring out how far it was from one to the next. Okay, so from two to five, is 3, and from 100 to 205 is 105. 
Now let's say you don't know how to get that number, okay? If you don't know how to get this number, what you do is you subtract right here. So you take this number is found by doing 205 minus 100. Okay, that's how I found that number. Which one of those two goes on top? That one on that side does. So it's 105 over 3. This is literally the only time you might pick up a calculator um, during this time, unless you need it for this part, 205 minus 100. You should check to see if this divides nicely. If it doesn't, you leave it, right? You keep it just as it is. But if it divides nicely, we want to go ahead and divide it. So what I get when I divide that is I get 35, and then if I divide that, it would be over 1. So it would be 35 over 1. So that's the answer for part A, rate of change. It's 35. But it will then ask you to explain what that means. Okay? Now, all that is asking you to do is to put some labels with these numbers. So the first label that came from the problem was two months. So this column with two and five, that's months. And the second label that came was this $100. So this 100 and this 205, those are dollars. So then when you put them into the fraction, that was dollars over months. So now, to explain it, it is 35, that's still on top, dollars. Where'd the months go? It's technically still there, it's just a one. So $35 for one month, or you could just say per month. Okay, that is your standard one. What I would do is I would pause the video here, and I would go and do the practice on GoFormative, and then I would come back for page two. Okay, so you can hit pause, and, uh, and then come back when you're ready for page two. Okay, so when you go to your GoFormative.com, this will not say number one. I think it's number seven. Um, it'll continue from that page before because I can't reuse the number one. Um, so this is asking you to identify. So look for these directions. Identify slope and y-intercept. Okay, those are the two things that you're identifying. Now we are not identifying point and slope, which is what we did before. We are doing slope and y-intercept. So that is going to be from this form, if you remember that form. If you don't, it's okay. I'm going to go over it right now. So in this form, this letter here represents the slope, and this letter here represents the y-intercept. Okay, so m is slope and b is y-intercept. When you write down your y-intercept, don't forget, we write it as 0, comma, and then that number that was right there, okay? Okay, so if you remember, this is the quiz that we took the very last day before spring break. So our slope is going to be the number there in front of x. So it's 3, or you can write 3 over 1, 3. The y-intercept is this number at the back side. Boom, it's 4 which needs to be written as 0, 4. So the first number you see is the slope. The second number you see is the y-intercept. Okay, you're already at a level 1. You have already passed. You already get to move on. But let's at least strive for a level 2, okay? Just in case we mess up on level 1, maybe you can get some saving grace here. Because you can also get a level 1 if you get this, this question over here correct, but not this one. Okay, all right, so this one also asks for the slope and the y-intercept. Again, there's two dots here, but you can't see them very well, so I'll make them a little bit bigger. Okay, so slope is the same thing we just did on the last page, where I'm just going to count down and over. Okay, so I'll start here on the left. I'm going to count down and then over until I get to my other dot. So it looks like I'm going down 2 and over 
3. So I just write down 2 over 3. And then the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the dot, it's the number, on the y-axis. There's my y-axis. So what is the dot on that line? So that number is at negative 1. It's kind of hard to see this, but here's 0, 0. Here's 0. So it's negative 1. So we write that as 0, comma, negative 1. And you're already at level 2. That was it. Okay? Now, again, these problems are not the same as the ones on go formative. They're different. But this is how you do that problem on the second page, second problem. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you how to graph down here at the bottom. Okay? Again, it's been a while since you've done this. There are two examples. You can watch both of them or you can pop back into the chat if that doesn't make sense, okay? So this is my y-intercept. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start at this number on that y-axis. Okay, that's your y-intercept, so we start there on the y-axis. So I'm gonna start at positive five and put a dot there. So one, two, three, four, five, here's five. Okay, and I'm halfway there. The second dot comes from starting here and counting your slope. So this is very similar to point slope form. Okay, I use my slope to find the second dot. I just have to start here instead of starting at a point. I'm gonna start at this y-intercept. So my slope is down one over four. So the negative one tells you to go down one and then to the right and there we have it now let's try that again just in case it didn't quite catch on or quite make sense okay so for this one we are going to start at this negative 2 that's on the back side that's the y-intercept so start by putting a dot at this number on this line. So negative 2 is right here. And then from there, you're going to use your slope. Now this slope says 2, which means I'm going to go up 2, but you have to go to the right 1. Okay, so you'll go up 2 and to the right 1. connect your dots. Okay, so this last one is a level four. So again, up to you uh, how much of it you want to see or not see. So the level four, the first thing it says to rewrite, which means solve it, into slope-intercept form. So what I'm going to do here is you're going to solve for y. Okay, so if you don't remember how to do that, just watch here. If you want to write this down for yourself, you can, or you can come back to the video as you work. So the first thing you've got to do is get rid of this x part by doing the opposite. It's positive, so I'm going to subtract. Okay, so I'm going to bring down my negative 5y equals negative 4x, put the x part first, plus 7. And now my final step is to divide every single number by negative 5. Okay, and there's your answer. So in the slope-intercept form, it's just this that we just found. So it's y equals, because these negative 5's cancel out, and then you just rewrite this, as ugly as it is, because they don't come out to be whole numbers. So negative 4 over negative 5, or you could write positive 4 over positive 5. And then this would be 
a negative 7 over 5. And then from there you find the slope. So the slope of this one is 4 over 5. And then the y-intercept is 0, comma, and then negative 7 over 5. Okay, so then right again, I would pause here, and I would go and do the second page on the go formative. Okay, now page 3 is exactly what you did on your standard check. Okay. So on page three, I'm actually just going to go over questions one and two. Okay, and that's it. So if you have any other questions, you can pop back into the chat and ask me about page three. Like, I still don't know how to do my level four. Um, but we've gone over this uh, a bunch this last week. So I think we're okay. If not, you can ask me questions um, back in the chat. So our slope and then our point. Okay, so this is just what we've been doing all week. And last week, so we're going to start here, be 2, comma, negative 7. And that's it. That's how I get a level 1 on the third page of the test on Friday. Okay, then when you go to graph these, you're going to do that same idea. You're going to pull out the point. You're going to pull out the slope and then you're going to actually graph them. So this is actually the quiz that you took uh, the other day. So 2 comma 8 is the point right here. And then from that dot, you're going to go down to and over 1. And that's it. That's the test that you will be taking on Friday. So look for that link. You'll get a link for feedback for this Go Formative that you're practicing today, and then you'll get a link for the test. So you can go and check and make sure you know what you're doing before you actually go to take your test.